I swear my hair changes like every video. Today I'm going for e-boy slash BTS look. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button as it really helps me out. But today we're gonna to be making three recipes from a Japanese cookbook titled Japanesey by Timothy Anderson. First, we're gonna be making nasu miso, which is a sweet miso glazed aubergine. Stir fried pork with ginger sauce. For desserts, yes, we're doing desserts as well. We are gonna be making Okinawa style donuts. When we lived in Tokyo, there was this specific shop that sold products from Okinawa. And one of the products they sold were, were these Okinawa donuts. Let's get started. So first we're gonna slice our aubergine in half lengthways. And then we're gonna to start to crisscross both sides of the aubergine until you get something that looks like this. And now we're gonna make our miso sauce which contains 100 grams of miso, two tablespoons of mirin, one tablespoon of water, two tablespoons of sugar, and half a teaspoon of vinegar. Thoroughly mix until nice and combined and you get something smooth that looks like this. Then heat about a centimeters worth of oil in a frying pan I'm going to place our aubergines into the frying pan face down for about five minutes until, the, until they become soft. Flip them over for another five to seven minutes until the whole aubergines become soft and tender. You'll know because they'll have a nice shine on the back of the skin. Then we're going to use some kitchen roll to pat down the aubergine as they have excess oil. And then we're going to spread our miso sauce all over the aubergine, get it nice and covered. Then place in the oven and grill for about 10 minutes at 200 degrees and you should have something that looks like this. Right, itadakimasu. I honestly lost for words how good that is. That aubergine was sweet, salty, got a nice kick of umami. Simply, it's outstanding and it's so easy to make. That aubergine is melt in your mouth. Sorry, mate, I'm just going to interrupt you quickly. We get it was delicious. How meta is this? Me talking to myself. Anyways, place your pork belly in the fridge for at least half an hour so it firms up and it's easier to slice into thin pieces. Then we're going to slice about half a cabbage into nice strips. as well as chopping up some spring onions to sprinkle over the top at the end. Thoroughly wash your cabbage. And once you've done that, take your pork belly out after it's been in the freezer for the required amount of time and chop into thin slices until you get strands like this. Then we're gonna make our ginger sauce, which contains three tablespoons of soy sauce, three tablespoons of mirin, one tablespoon of sesame oil, one tablespoon of vegetable oil, one tablespoon of ketchup, and a knob of ginger thinly sliced, and we're gonna puree that until it's all nice and combined. Set that aside. Then add your pork into frying pan and let fry off first. Then add the cabbage. Fry off for a couple minutes until it's nice and cooked. Then we're gonna add our bean sprouts and the sauce and mix thoroughly. Top with some spring onions and some sesame seeds. I also made a dipping sauce for the pork, which is just some grated daikon and some ponzu. I didn't get the reaction of me eating this, but it was so delicious. And I implore any student to make it because it was just so easy. Now let's move on to the desserts. Grab your super heavy mixer. Crack two eggs in a bowl, 100 if you can, because that looks hella cool. <laughs> Whisk with 40 grams of sugar. Then you realize you have an electric mixer behind you, so whisk in that. Then we're gonna add two tablespoons of honey. Sorry mate, we can't hear you, just carry on with the cooking. And one tablespoon of melted butter. 
as well as one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I also added some almond extract because I really like that almond taste. And thoroughly mix. Then in the bowl, we're gonna add uh, 200 grams of plain flour and half a teaspoon of baking powder and mix. And it's gonna look something like a pancake batter, but just a bit thicker. So we're gonna set in the fridge for about half an hour. On a baking sheet with some parchment paper covered in some flour, we're gonna roll them into little balls. We're gonna make them quite small as they will rise and they will expand in the hot oil. And then plop them in some hot oil and then let fry for about eight to 10 minutes until they look nice and golden. What's great about these donuts is that they'll cook evenly as they flip like this and you want that little blister, as you can see there, on these donuts. And you want a nice crispy exterior as seen here and a nice soft center. Dust them with some powdered sugar and then they're ready to go. Right, itadakimasu. You know when you just have that dish that takes you back to your childhood? They're really light, crispy on the outside, but really soft on the inside. Oh my god. <clears throat> Get a bit emotional. I'd say this book is probably hands down one of my favourites. If you're looking to get into Japanese cooking, then this is an absolute must. I'll leave a link down below if you want to check it out or even buy it. I've, I've cooked probably about half the recipes in here already. Definitely one that's going to get a lot of use out of. You know, you're not going to just make one or two. Um, they're very accessible, which is always great for students as well. Hit that like button, put down in the comments what you think I should make next. And I'll see you soon. You idiot.